Praise the Lord. Uh, would you stand with me? And let us turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. Would you do one thing for me this morning also? Would you help me preach? Let's get excited for Jesus. Isaiah chapter 46, and I'm going to read from verse 3 until 9. It says, Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age I am he, and even to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom will you liken me and make me equal? And compare me that we should be alike. They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver on the scales. They hire a goldsmith and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves. Yes, they worship. They bear it on their shoulder. They carry it and set it in its place and it stands. From its place it shall not move. Though one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this, and show yourselves men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors, uh, remember the former things of old, uh, for I am God, uh, and there is no other. I am God, uh, and there is none like me. You know, in verse 4, it says four little words there, and that will be the title of my message this morning. It says, I will carry you. I will, I will carry you. See, I, I am only here this morning because uh, I'm being carried. See, I, I only made it through uh, uh, another year because uh, I was being carried. Could you tell your neighbor that this morning? I am being uh, carried. Come on, I don't think they heard you. Uh, tell your neighbor, I am being carried. Because he has been good to me. Because he has been faithful to me. If you know that you have been carried, would you raise your hands with me? Would you lift your hands this morning with me? If you know that you're being carried, Father God, we lift our hands to say here, we thank you that we have been carried by you. And we are being carried, oh God, even through our journey of life because you have been good to us. Father God, I pray this morning that you would release your anointing in this place. Release the anointing for me to preach and your people, oh God, to hear. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Would you turn around and tell your neighbor, shake their hand, I'm being carried. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're being carried. Glory be to God. See, this morning, I, I need to let somebody know. In fact, I need to prophesy and decree and declare to somebody today uh, that God uh, is for you. That God is for you and He's not against you. He is for your su success uh, and not your failure. He is for your victory uh, and not your defeat. Uh, he is for your life uh, and not your death. Uh, he is for your joy uh, and not your despair. He is for your prosperity uh, and not your poverty. Uh, he is for your healing uh, and not your sickness. Uh, he is for your freedom uh, and not your bondage. Uh, he is for your peace uh, and not your heartache. Uh, God is uh, for you. He is on my side. 
God is for you this morning. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter what society says. It doesn't matter what social media says. God is for you. Hallelujah. You know, this passage of scripture, it is just in reflection of this year. I mean, this year had been tough. It has been, you know, we have been faced with a lot of challenges and, and trials. But the Lord reminded me of these four little words. I have carried you. In spite of all that has taken place. And the story and the backdrop of, of this uh, particular scripture. It is in, in, in Israel when King Ahaz, he was seeking protection uh, from Assyria against uh, the Babylonians. He was seeking protection uh, because they had uh, given up on God. They were trying to make a treaty uh, with a power that thinks uh, that they could have been protected uh, on all sides. But even though they made that treaty uh, and they thought uh, and they put confidence in that, uh, that treaty was broken. And they, the Babylonians invaded Israel anyway. How many of you know this morning you cannot trust the devil? You, you cannot make a pact uh, with the enemy. Hallelujah. You see, God saw this uh, as a slap on the face uh, because his people uh, did not trust him. Uh, they were trusting uh, an earthly source. And he was uh, reminding Israel. They remind, he was reminding the people uh, when they came out uh, of Egypt. Uh, he was reminding them, uh, I was carrying you uh, through the Red Sea. Uh, I was carrying you uh, through the desert. Uh, I was carrying you uh, when manna was coming down. Uh, I was carrying you uh, with a pillar of cloud uh, and a pillar of fire. He was reminding them uh, of who he is. He was uh, carrying them uh, as a people and a nation. See, they gave up on God. But can I tell you something this morning? Uh, do not give up on God. Uh, never give up on God. Uh, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Uh, it doesn't matter the storms uh, that you might be faced with. Uh, do not give up uh, on God. Uh, because only God uh, can do uh, what nobody else can do for you. Come on, if you're being carried this morning, uh, if God is carrying you, uh, give him a praise. He carries you through the fire. He carries you through the flood. Uh, he carries you through the desert. Uh, he is on uh, your side. And in the middle of all this, uh, there rose a prophet named Isaiah in, the, in this rebellion against God. Uh, and God rose up a voice uh, to remind the children of Israel uh, as to who he is. Because God wanted to show them uh, that even though uh, the enemy might seem strong, uh, he's saying, uh, I got you. He says, I got your back. See, I got you all the way around. I am still God. And there is none besides me. See, it's the same message for you and I today. The Lord wants to say to us today, even though you are under attack, even though you are going through some things and that you don't understand, God wants you to know that if you trust me, everything is going to be all right. Do not sign a pact uh, with the enemy. Uh, do not trust uh, your enemies uh, because they're going to they, uh, uh, disappoint you. Doesn't matter what they say up front. Uh, the enemy always comes uh, and he gives you uh, a nice picture. But in behind, uh, he has a dagger and a sword. See, as long as the Lord is on your side, no weapon that is formed against you uh, shall prosper. 
as long as God is on my side, uh, nothing the enemy comes against me with. Uh, the Bible says that when, when the enemy uh, shall come in uh, like a flood, uh, my God uh, will deliver me. Hallelujah. The Word of God says, He carried me from the womb. See, if God didn't carry you, you wouldn't be here. See, because it is, an, it is comforting to know that even from the inception of the womb, He carried me. See, we're only here today because uh, He carried me. He carried you. See, just preparing this, I remember my own life and what my, my mother told me. We're from a family of 13 children. And when my sister before me was born, she was number 12, uh, the doctor told her that do not have any more kids uh, because your blood uh, may not be sufficient to sustain uh, that child. But yet still, uh, God uh, had a plan. God uh, was carrying me uh, even uh, before the womb. See, if God didn't carry you, and some of us might be saying uh, that God didn't carry you, uh, my mother carried you. Uh, can I tell you something this morning? Uh, God was not only carrying you, uh, but He was carrying uh, the mother and the womb that was carrying you. See, because God has a plan, uh, and God has a purpose, uh, and God uh, has something good, uh, because God uh, is for you. Because God had a deposit. Could you imagine that that didn't happen, uh, and they took the doctor's advice, uh, and that didn't happen? Uh, I would not have been here today. Uh, you see, when God uh, has a purpose, uh, and a plan, uh, and a deposit, uh, I am here today. Uh, I'm in my right mind. Uh, I didn't have uh, less blood. I'm, blood. Uh, I'm not anemic. Uh, I am healthy. Uh, I am whole, uh, and I am born again uh, in the blood of Jesus Christ. See, because God, uh, He had a plan. He was carrying me uh, even uh, when I couldn't carry myself. It's because I'm so thankful that my days uh, are in His hand. And I can trust Him uh, because He carried me then uh, to carry me now. See, when I was helpless, uh, I didn't know anything. Uh, he carried me. Now that I'm grown up uh, and ha I have an understanding uh, of who he is uh, and I've seen uh, what he has done, uh, I can trust him uh, to still carry me. It doesn't matter what it looks like. See, that is why when God uh, carries you, uh, you don't lose your mind. When God carries you, uh, you didn't commit suicide. Uh, when God carries you, uh, you get through that struggle. Uh, when God carries you, uh, you made it through that betrayal uh, and that heartbreak. Uh, that's why uh, that accident didn't take you. That is why uh, drugs couldn't get hold of you. Uh, that is why uh, the blood uh, covers you uh, all the way. Uh, because God uh, has been carrying you. Hallelujah. In the book of Isaiah 53, I just love this passage of Scripture. And every time I read it, God shows me something new. Verses 4 and 5, it says, Surely uh, He has borne our griefs. Uh, surely, without a shadow uh, of a doubt, uh, God uh, has carried me. Uh, he has borne uh, my griefs. He has carried uh, my sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, uh, smitten by God and afflicted. Uh, but, that's a conjunction right there. But, uh, 
He was wounded uh, for our transgressions uh, and he was bruised uh, for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement uh, for our peace was upon him uh, and by uh, his stripes uh, I am healed. Uh, I am being uh, carried. Surely he has borne Surely uh, he has carried. See, this is a prophetic view. From the prophet Isaiah, he was looking through the lens of heaven uh, and he was seeing a preview uh, of Jesus Christ uh, thousands of years uh, ahead of time uh, before the crucifixion uh, even took place. Uh, he saw that Jesus uh, was carrying uh, your sorrow. Uh, he was carrying uh, your grief. Uh, he was carrying your pain, uh, your sickness, uh, your disease. Uh, you see, God uh, has a plan uh, for all of us. You see, back in the Old Testament, uh, it was the blood of bulls and of goats and of sheep and cattle. Uh, that blood uh, could only have sustained you uh, for one year. The next year, uh, you had to repeat it again. Uh, but thank God, uh, the blood, uh, the Lamb of God, uh, who takes away uh, the sins of the world, uh, was sent uh, so he can carry us uh, to eternity. The blood, it carries us when nothing else could work. Uh, Jesus said, uh, I've already have a plan uh, that is in place uh, to carry the sins, uh, to carry mankind, uh, to carry humanity, uh, my blood. And that blood uh, has never lost its power. You see, that carrying agent of Jesus, uh, remember I preached some time ago, uh, that J factor, that J cell, uh, that Jesus uh, that is in you uh, has a blueprint uh, of sin uh, and the blood uh, cannot, uh, it cannot uh, be overcome uh, with sin uh, because the blood of Jesus uh, is still all powerful. It carries me. It sustains me. Uh, it continues to cleanse Hallelujah. See, Jesus carried our griefs and our sorrows, uh, and yet we esteemed him stricken, uh, smitten by God. Uh, you see, the religious people, they were saying, uh, people were saying uh, he was only getting what he deserved. Uh, but can I submit to you today, uh, he didn't get uh, what he deserved. Uh, he got uh, what I deserve. Uh, Jesus, uh, he paid the price. Uh, he laid down his life, uh, and he took my place. Uh, he was carrying me. Uh, He thought about me. He has borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. See, that word born, it means uh, to carry, to accept, uh, to bear continuously. Because we need uh, a continuous help from our God. We need continuous help. Uh, that is why he said, uh, I must go uh, and I will send you the comforter. I will send you the one uh, that will give you uh, an advantage. Uh, that's why the Holy Spirit uh, is here to carry us uh, continually. See, because Jesus said, I will bear the responsibility. You see, when you give your life over to Jesus, uh, you are Jesus is saying, come, uh, and I will bear the responsibility. Uh, come, uh, I will take the initiative. Uh, I will bear the responsibility uh, of your sin, uh, of your failures, uh, of your past. Uh, I will bear that responsibility. Uh, come uh, unto me. Romans 5 and 8, it says, but God, he demonstrates uh, his own love towards us, uh, that while we were still sinners, uh, Christ died for me. When you think about that scripture, when I was an alien, uh, when I was in sin, uh, when I was away from God, uh, when I did not know anything about God, uh, God, uh, he loved me enough uh, to give his life. 
how much more would he do for me today uh, now that I've been redeemed uh, by his blood? How much more will he carry me uh, and lift me up? Uh, he will bear me uh, up in his hands now that I've been redeemed uh, by his blood. Hallelujah. See, a lot of people today are going around depressed. They are depressed because uh, they say nobody loves them. Uh, God doesn't love me anymore. But can I tell you something this morning? You are not only loved, but you have always been loved. And I know you're probably just thinking, when you got life, when you started living here on the earth, uh, if you understand who God is, the book of Revelation, it says, uh, God says, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. I am uh, the beginning. I am the end. Hallelujah. He is not, he does not live in time. Uh, time lives in him. And God uh, has always been and always will be. The Bible also said that God is omniscient. That's two words. And the word omni, it means all. And science, it means knowledge or all-knowing. God says, I've always been and I will always be. And I am all-knowing. He says, I'm aware of myself all the time. And if I'm aware of myself, I've been aware of you. Even before you were speck in your father's eye, before God brought you together, God said, I knew you. See, everybody is fighting up today and talking about when does life begin. Life begins in God because he knew us even before we were formed. God says, I've been aware of you. And as long, I've been, as long as I have been aware of you, uh, I have loved you. That's why the Bible says, I've loved you uh, with an everlasting love. See, we can't understand that kind of love. Uh, because he loved us uh, from eternity past. Uh, and he's going to love us uh, until eternity uh, plus eternity. That's the God that we serve. You are not unloved. You have been loved, but you are just unaware that you have been loved. Jeremiah 1 and 5, it says, before I formed you. Could you imagine that? Could you wrap your minds around that? Before you were formed, that means before you were ever conceived, God said, I knew you. We know life uh, when life begins in the womb. Uh, but you see, God uh, was carrying you uh, in his bosom uh, from eternity past. Uh, and when Jesus, uh, he came uh, in a manger as a baby, uh, he was carrying us. Uh, because God, uh, he wanted uh, to bring man unto himself. Uh, and he was carrying uh, the birth uh, of you and I. That's why he says we are new creations in Christ. Hallelujah. See, the devil, he wants you to think that God only loved you when you arrived here on the planet. But before you were formed in your mother's womb, he said, I knew you. I loved you. I've ordained you. I've sanctified you to be who you are today. God has a plan for you. You were not an accident. It was preordained by God uh, because he was carrying you. He was pregnant with you uh, to release you into the earth. Hallelujah. In verse 5 it says, even to your old age I am he. And even to gray hairs, Pastor John was talking about gray hairs, uh, I will carry you. Says, I have made you and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. 
Here's the good word. But I want you to tell your neighbor this. Come on, don't look at me, look at your neighbor. You're looking at your neighbor, you're still looking at me. The good word of the Lord says, the Lord will never quit on you. Oh, come on, that, that should be more powerful than that. Tell your neighbor, the God, my God will not quit on you. Hallelujah. He will carry you to the end. Hallelujah. He started with you and he's going to finish with you. You see, because uh, people will start with you, uh, but they won't finish with you. Uh, people will leave you uh, all around. Uh, people will leave the church. Uh, husbands will leave wives. Uh, wives will leave husbands. Uh, children would even say, I don't know your parents. But God... He is a present help. He is a shield. He is your refuge. He is your buckler. He is your everything. He says, I will not quit on you. I began with you and I will finish with you. He says, I have not only carried you, but I have made you. The word made. It means pressing and squeezing. It's a royal work. It is a, a sanctification that is taking place. God says, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight those uh, that fight my plan. I'm going to fight uh, the, the, the agenda of hell uh, because you are a royal work. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. Uh, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people chosen by God. You are a people not to be despised, but we are a people to be celebrated because we are royalty. We are to be celebrated. See, Jesus said, I've not only fought with my blood for you, but I'm raising you up in this present day and in this hour to fight with me. He says, I want you to reign with me. I want you to reign in this life. I want you to reign in your jobs, reign in your family, reign in your church. Men, become the priest of your home again. Rise up and take your position because you are a royal priest. Hallelujah. He's raising us up. He says, now your life uh, is hid in me, uh, and the life which I now live in the flesh, uh, it is by the Son of God. Uh, my life uh, is no longer my own. Uh, I am reigning in Christ. Uh, I am hidden in Christ. Uh, he is uh, carrying me. Uh, he is carrying you. Uh, he's carrying the church. Hallelujah. The body of Christ, we are to be celebrated. Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are the fullness of the Godhead bodily in Jesus Christ. We are bear He is bearing us. He is carrying us. Hallelujah. The verse goes on to say, I will bear your load. He says, I will bear your load. What is he saying? He says, I have carried what you are carrying. Jesus says, I have carried what you are carrying today. He says, I've carried your struggle. I've carried your mess. I've carried your past. I've carried your pain. I've carried your hurts. I've carried your problems. And that means that he has carried everything you're struggling with. Jesus said, I have borne it in my body. Hallelujah. See, that word bear, it also has a second meaning. It also means to drag. Drag. And there's a beautiful picture with Jesus. 
As he walked through the streets of Jerusalem, uh, he was bearing a wooden cross. Uh, and what was he doing? Uh, he was dragging uh, a cross. He drug your problem. He dragged your struggle. He dragged your pain on that cross. He dragged it through the city. He dragged it through the gate. He went up to Golgotha's hill and he stood and he laid and stretched out his arms and he said, I have borne it all for you. He says, I'm going to carry you. Hallelujah. See, God carried all of our anxieties and our fears. See, He bore the load so we don't have to carry it. There's a song that goes, burdens are lifted at Calvary. He lifts the burdens. When the cross was lifted up and dropped into that hole, Jesus, he said, I bore it all for you. He was carrying us. He carried us. You don't have to be burdened. You don't have to be stressed. In fact, he says, come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden. And I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. The verse goes on to say, I will deliver you. Tell your neighbor. It means he will get you to your destination. Come on, tell your neighbor. He's going to get you to your destination. Hallelujah. He will carry you. He says, the plans I have for you, uh, I will fulfill it. See, you are not COD. You are postage paid. You see, because uh, everything that God has for you, uh, He already paid for it uh, with His blood. Uh, you are postage uh, paid. He paid for it with his blood. And he's going to get you there. He's going to get you to your destination. He's going to get you to your promotion. He's going to get you to that job. He's going to get you to that money. He's going to get you to that breakthrough. Anything you desire, he's going to get you to that thing that you think that is unreachable. God says, with me, all things are possible because you are being carried by me. In fact, David said, I was young, and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. See, in everything we do, you have two choices. You can carry or be carried. In verse 5, just want to read that passage again. To whom will you liken me and make me equal? And compare me that we should be alike. They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the, on the scales. They hire a goldsmith and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves. Yes, they worship. They bear it on their shoulders and watch that. They carry it and set it in its place and in its stands. From its place it will not move. Though one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer nor save him from his trouble. See, they produced a God and they worship the thing which the goldsmith made. God was telling them, everything that you produce, you have to carry it. It says it right there. They bear it up on their shoulders. 
and they worship it. How can I worship something that my hands have made? Am I the creator of the thing or the thing created me? He was trying to show them the, the foolishness of their wisdom. See, because everything we produce, uh, and that is not just idols, uh, that means anything uh, that comes between you and God, uh, and that becomes uh, worship to you, uh, you are carrying something uh, that God doesn't want you to carry. You are bearing it up uh, on your own shoulders, uh, because God has nothing to do with that. But Jesus said... Uh, if you come unto me uh, and you submit to me, uh, if you acknowledge me uh, as the true and the living God, uh, the sustainer, the creator of heaven and earth, uh, I will be your provider. I will give you all that you need uh, and you don't have to carry uh, the weight. I'm going to carry you uh, and everything uh, that you are carrying. So this morning the question is, do you want to carry the weight on your own and by yourself? Or do you want to be carried by the true and the living God? Hallelujah. Praise Him when you come. You know, in life, there's a lot of things, a lot of baggages, a lot of stress. And lately we have seen an influx not only around us, but in the church, in the body of Christ. Christians are being overwhelmed by their finances. They're being overwhelmed in relationship. They're being overwhelmed uh, with the economy. They're being overwhelmed in their marriages. Uh, They're being overwhelmed uh, with friendships. A lot of people are, are lonely. They are stressed. And I believe that this morning uh, is a fresh start and it's a turning point. Because you don't have to carry uh, the burden on your own. You don't have to carry anything uh, on your own. Uh, Jesus said, uh, if you will come to me uh, and leave it uh, at my feet. Uh, he says, uh, cast your cares uh, upon me. Because I care for you. He says, if you would give it to me, you will be free. Because I am being a carrier. And you will put it on my shoulders. See, sometimes we think that our shoulders are broader than that of God's. We said, God, you step out of the way. Let me fix this. I got this. But Jesus said, I got you. You ain't got me. I was carrying you uh, even before you even knew uh, I was carrying you. See, the whole world, God is carrying them. They don't know it yet. But when you and I, we tell them the truth of the gospel, uh, they will become aware of a God uh, that is carrying them. Would you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. With your eyes closed and your heads bowed. He's carrying you. He's carrying you this morning. When you didn't know it, when you were under such attack from the enemy, you didn't know where to turn. He says, I was carrying you. I was holding you up. With my mighty right hand, I was holding you. It says, I was giving my angels charge over you to bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. When he says, I've given charge, it means uh, he has given complete control to your angel. Uh, to give charge, uh, to take charge over you that you would not uh, falter or fail. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Just tell him this morning what's on your mind. That thing you've been carrying, you've been struggling with. This morning I believe there's a, a spirit of breakthrough over your life. That you will not be the same again. You want to release that weight that is holding you down. Hallelujah. Praise your name. If you are here this morning and you have never given your life to Jesus, if you have never said, yes, Jesus, I want to give uh, my burden over to you. I've been struggling. My life is a total mess. I don't know which uh, direction to turn. Uh, I've been running. I've been searching. If you are here this morning, would you slip your hands up? I, I just want to pray with you. Would you slip your hands up? Hallelujah. 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 If you have lifted your hands this morning, and here's what the Bible says. That heaven rejoices as the one sinner that comes to repentance. And if heaven can rejoice over one sinner that comes to repentance, I believe the body of Christ uh, can celebrate as the one that comes in uh, to the kingdom. So would all of us just repeat this prayer? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth uh, and you believe in your heart uh, that Jesus died uh, and he rose again, you shall be saved. So would we all just repeat this prayer and just encourage those uh, that have lifted their hands. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again, that you shed your blood to cleanse me from my sin. I believe, Lord, that my sins are washed away. And from today, I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you just put your hands together? Come on, just celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to make a second call this morning with your eyes closed. And your head's bowed. If you feel there is a weight, there is something you need to free yourselves off. Would you make your way down to the front? As the praise team would sing a song. And after that song, we're just going to dismiss. I just want to pray with you. I just want to believe with you. Whether it's sickness in your body. Whether it's something you are going through on your job, in a relationship, whatever it is, I believe God wants to set you free this morning. Don't think about who's watching. Don't think about who's around you. They have nothing to do with that because you know what you are, where you've been through. You know the valleys, you know the fire, you know the flood, you know everything you have been through in life. Hallelujah. Just make your way down quickly. You don't want to prolong it. Just come quickly as the praise team would sing. Uh, and after we just would dismiss the service uh, while we minister to those. And as you come, just come worshiping God. Just lift your hands. Just worship Him. Uh, believe Him that God uh, is going to do a breakthrough. He's going to do something uh, spectacular right now uh, in Jesus' name.
Oh, just worship with us, church. Just worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today, God, for your presence in this house. We thank you, Lord, as we go from this place, your presence will overshadow us. Your glory, oh God, will resonate from within us. Because we are glory carriers, oh God. We are carriers of your presence. And Lord, as you carry us into our workplace, into our homes, into the environment, oh God, we will make an impact, oh Lord. We will make an impact for the kingdom, oh Lord. Thank you, oh God. For your, your people today, continue to bless and uplift them, O oh Lord, to new heights and deeper depths as we grow and we seek to know you more. Father, be with us. Keep us safe and watch over us. Be our shield and our buckler, O oh God, our shelter, our fortress, our refuge, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. Don't forget our evening service. At 6.30, come expecting God to do something wonderful again. Amen. Amen. The praise team is just going to so close out with another song. Heart the hell.